Lazarus sat outside of the rich man's house, and the dogs came and licked his sores. We hear that in today's gospel. And immediately when I hear about the dog's cane, I think of a rather particular dog. Blessed Joan had two sons and two daughters, and she was praying for a fifth child in her family. Blessed Joan prayed long and hard for a fifth child. And when she was pregnant with her fifth child, Blessed Joan had a very strange dream. She dreamt that in her womb was a dog. And when she gave birth to this dog, this dog had a torch in its mouth and it began running about. And it set Europe on fire with love for God. Blessed Joan was the mother of St. Dominic. And St. Dominic was that child that came forth from her like a dog with a burning torch. And he set Europe on fire with love for God. And what was the tool that St. Dominic gave to the world to set it on fire with love for God? It was the rosary. It was the rosary. Those simple prayers of Hail Marys and Our Fathers while we meditate upon the life, death, resurrection of Christ, the man who would rise from the dead, as is predicted in today's gospel, and some would listen to, but others would not. And just because we're here at Mass today doesn't mean that we are really listening to Christ now. The Blessed Mother, when she appeared to the three children at Fatima, Francesco asked how come he couldn't see her, and she said to him that he needed to pray many rosaries. He needed to grow in holiness that he might see her. And he began praying many rosaries until he could see the beautiful lady. But seeing the beautiful lady in a vision or an apparition is nothing compared to seeing the beautiful lady in all eternity. And you and I have been given an incredible means of salvation. Obviously our baptism into the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Obviously the body and blood, soul, and divinity of Christ each time we receive him in the Eucharist. And obviously the call at Fatima to pray the rosary daily. But in a very special way, to pray a very unique rosary. A rosary for the holy souls in purgatory. A rosary who by its very colored beads reminds us that our prayers can take a soul from the bosom of Abraham to the glory of heaven, from the bosom of Abraham to see the vision of the beautiful lady whose voice is beyond compare. And the reason her voice is beyond compare and because the reason she is so beautiful is because she is so filled with love for God and for each of us. And how do we know that we grow in love for her? We know because we feel the Spirit prompting us to prayer. When praying this particular rosary, we start with black beads reminding us that the soul is trapped in darkness. Because even in the bosom of Abraham, they do not enjoy the eternal light of the heavenly glory. 
this particular rosary first given to Dominic to fight the heresies that were present in his day is now given to us in a very special way to pray for the poor souls that they might pass from darkness into light. The first decade is black. The next decade is dark gray. The next a medium gray. The fourth a light gray. And the fifth white. To remind us that our prayers are constantly leading souls from darkness into light. It's not necessary to pray a particular style of rosary, but it's sometimes helpful to visualize it. This particular rosary, this gift of Holy Mother Church, if you will, is a reminder to us that along with the Virgin Mary, we call upon the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ, his life-giving passion to receive into heavenly glory the souls of those whom we love, those for whom we are so thankful. Sometimes people say to me, well, gee, this holy soul sodality must have emptied out purgatory by now. One would think so, but it doesn't work that way. Sad to say in this nation of ours, this land of plenty, over 4,000 souls are aborted each day. Over 4,000 innocent, unbaptized souls. They need our prayers. Each day there are hundreds of thousands of Africans and Asians, Chinese atheists, people who have never heard the gospel, people who have no understanding of the faith, but who struggle because they are even deprived of an understanding of natural law. Sometimes we forget that what little we do for those souls, for example, might be more than enough for them to pass from the bosom of Abraham into heavenly glory. And once they're there, who would they feel more responsible to than you and I who have prayed for them? Sometimes I think about things that my ancestors said to me when I was a child. And I think about how they always thought it was very important to pray for people in the cemetery, even the ones they didn't know when we drove by. Sometimes I remember being told that it was important to pray for people we might never meet who have died today, died in a war somewhere that gets reported on our news. And we would pause it during the commercial, put it on mute, say three Hail Marys, and ask Our Lady to receive some souls into heavenly glory. They may not be major sinners. Maybe they are a lot holier than you and I. And if by our prayers they enter heavenly glory, then they will be doing intercession for us. We don't always realize it. God has called us to be mindful of others and to love others. And that doesn't mean just our own family. That means everybody that is presented to us on TV, in the newspaper, when people talk to you and they say, oh, did you hear about that fire? Five people died in that burning building. Pray for those five people, 
For some reason, God has put somebody into your life that you might find out about those five people. You read the newspaper and you see that some soldier was killed. Pray for that soldier. You have no idea the good that you've done, the good that you will do in eternity, the good that will be done for you by those very souls whom you placed in heavenly glory. Christ said to Lazarus, they will not even believe if someone should rise from the dead. But maybe they'll come to believe if you touch their lives. Ask a friend. Ask someone you know at church to join the Holy Soul Sodality. Buy an extra rosary. And when you notice somebody in church that doesn't seem to have one, give them a rosary so that it might be something that helps connect them to our Blessed Mother. She'll draw them closer. She'll transform them into saints. She sent Saint Dominic out to set all of Europe on blaze with love of God. She's not going to send another Saint Dominic. She's going to send you instead. She's going to send each one of us. Each one of us can do something. And all of us together can help set our nation on fire again. Pray for the souls and ask those souls who enter heavenly glory to pray for our nation. Because sadly, our nation is desperately in need of transformation, just as desperate as Europe was when St. Dominic gave them the rosary the first time. You and I are called to do that little thing, certainly not as significant as what Father Sapochko was called to do, certainly not as all-embracing as what St. Faustina was called to do. But if she who had so little education and he who had so little opportunity was able to transform even us 75 years later, how much more can our right decision transform others? We have an opportunity to do good today and tomorrow and the next day. And we should never overlook that opportunity. Each of us in some unique way. I'll be talking more about that in the talk after Mass. May God bless us all. Please stand and join me in the profession of our faith. I believe one God.